Uh, Keith from JRX here. In this video, we're going to take apart a 4CS fork, which I've just taken off this Husky, and we're going to take out the original um, bottoming control bullet and replace it with a longer one. The longer bullet um, allows you to move the forks up in the triple clamp, which forms part of our lowering kit. Um, so you, the, uh, the wheel doesn't foul on the frame or the exhaust pipe um, once you've moved the forks up. So to take these forks apart, um, they're not as complicated as everybody thinks. Um, I'll show you how. Uh, we need a 19mm spanner, a 14mm spanner, a T27 Torx drive, a 17 and a 19 socket, some kind of fork cap tool. This one's a Motion Pro one. We'll probably be supplying these on our site soon. Um, pretty inexpensive. And you need a 17mm uh, male drive to get the plug out of the bottom. Um, hard to come by some of those things, but we have a solution with a galvanized coupling nut, which works perfectly fine, and we actually will supply one of these uh, in, with, in with the kit. Um, anyway, I'll show you from here. So first of all, to get the oil out of the uh, out of the fork, I loosened this one off before it came out of the triple clamp. That's probably a good idea to do. Otherwise, you have to try and hold the body of the the fork while you're doing it. So we need to just take the spring out. So in order to take the spring out, we just need to take our 19 mm spanner, put it in there into the the nut on the top of the spring guide take a 90mm socket or whatever you fit your cap and pretty much just take the cap off the spring cap, fork cap sorry, and with that removed, we can just take the spring out. And there's oil in the front of this, in the top of this, so we'll just tip that out first. The uh, clicker adjuster rod just came out, so we'll just take that out for now. Now, in the bottom here, we've got the 17mm plug um, base valve. Now, I've loosened this one off. I did use a rattle gun to loosen that off um, just to break it. That's probably not a good idea, and I'll tell you why in a minute when I get it apart. Um, you should be able to just clamp this in a vise um, and just use a, a ratchet. It, sh it, it should have no problem with spinning the cartridge. Um, anyway, if you have to use a rattle gun, I'll, t I'll show you the consequences of that in a sec. It's, um, it's not a problem. It just loosens off one of, the, one of the nuts inside that you just need to make sure that when you put it back together that you... Uh, you can really tighten and probably a bit of Loctite on. So we just take that out, and this is where most of the oil is going to come from. So this is the bottoming control and base valve. There's a special tool that KTM or WP make in order to get the cartridge rod out because you have to push it out because it's got O-rings on it and it doesn't just push out easily. Um, 
but all you need to find is a socket that's got a 28 mil OD this one's a 21 mil plug spanner and it works perfectly well um, so there's no need for a special tool so basically you push that up until it stops there's a lip inside and you just push out cartridge until it frees itself Oops. and there you have the fork separated now just just gonna put that there for a sec now I'm going to show you why you shouldn't rattle out that base valve this is why because that is now loose and almost off and that's what rattling the thing out does when when you use a rattle gun this isn't undoes but this because of its inertia its weight stays put and basically you also undo that at the same time now good idea to put that back together with a little Clean it, clean it up, and a little bit of Loctite is what most guys do anyway when they put these things back together. Um, but that's why rattling does that. Not detrimental, it's just one of those things that you probably should just check anyway. Okay. So that. We want to get the cartridge out, sorry, the spring guide off, but because it's been wound down to the bottom of the thread, it gets caught on the bottom of the thread on the cartridge rod, so we've just put the cap back on and just break it from the bottom of the thread there. Now that's free. Now this one's slightly stuck. Of course, you can always try and... If you, <coughs> if you do have trouble, getting the cap off because it's once you've broken that thread from the bottom then we, by using this then this one can get stuck on the, the, the top you can clamp the rod in a in a soft soft jaw vise or alternatively just get a a rattler and just hold the hold the, the shank and just just rattle the top and it will just break from the top so once you've done that you take the cap back off We'll take the spring guide off. It just wants to be stiff. And from there, it's just a case of removing the cartridge piston. Right, so this is the part we want to remove. Let's do that with the 14 mil spanner. The spanner on the rebound tap or the tap. Gentle with this, should break easy. It's a very, very fine thread. And I also want to make sure that none of the washers, 
the shims are stuck to the bottom of this. And take it off. Inside here is a needle. On the compression side, the needle goes with the point downwards. On the rebound side, it goes in with the point upwards. That's the only difference. Everything else is the same. The fact that these are two different colours, the one side to the other, is, is they're exactly the same part. They're just colour coordinated for rebound and compression. The new parts that we supply are all just the one colour. So you just need to make sure that on the compression leg, which is your brake side, that you put the needle facing downwards. So basically it's just a case of taking the new part, putting the needle in, cleaning these threads with a bit of brake, bit of um, cleaner, they come from the factory with a little smear of sort of painted on Loctite. Um, obviously that's been used. Just a tiny dab of blue Loctite. Not very much. Just enough to just, just to grab. Um, obviously you want to clear the oil off. Now, these shims underneath, the rebound, they're a... They have a bigger centre hole. And they go over this sorry they have a bigger center hole and they all fit over the boss on the rebound tap on the tap if you don't get them over there then you're going to squash them when you try it when you tighten them up so make sure that, that they have all gone down over this I don't know if you can see that Hold on. Don't want to take this completely apart. So under that spring, you see a stepped part, top part of the tap there. That's where the shims have to go over. At the moment, when you push it down, they're they're not over that. So you need to jiggle them around a bit, or Alternatively, take the whole thing. There you go. So now they've all popped over. So now they are actually right the way down, right up to that stepped edge. And it's just a case of just hold the piston to keep them shims down. Screw, pop back up again. Screw the new part on with the needle inside. Now you need a 12 mil spanner for this, just to get that on. So that's it. That's that's the installed new part. Let's need to tighten this up. Seven newton meters, not very tight. It's just a case of snugging, really. Yeah. Very very fine thread. Don't go too mad with it. But that's that then it's just a case of putting it back together again so if you do a f service at the same time these forks are new so i'm not worrying about cleaning the oil off and everything but if you get some cleaner and clean everything up before you put it back together i probably will do but for the sake of the video i'm just going to put it back together as it is rod back in Then you take your, your rebound, sorry, your bottom end control, and like I showed you that had come loose, I'd take that off, put it
put a bit of Loctite on there, tighten it back up. And again, seven newton meters, not very, not very much tightness. Uh, steel ruler is good for this, just in the little grooves. And of course, you've got the the uh, hex in the bottom you can use just to just to snug that up. And when the fork goes back together in the outer, outer tubes, basically this part screws into the bottom of there. And now the new bullet is into the bottom in control. If we make this rod 22 mil or thereabouts 23 mil, I think longer it is, and that will stop your bottom in once you when you move your forks up in the triple clamp. Now on the 4CS fork, the reason why it's difficult to shorten internally is because. I'll see it there. On full extension, when the top when the top out springs is pulled back slightly, there's a little machine groove here that just allows pressure to equalise from both sides of the of the seal here. If you shorten internally using a spacer and that and that, move that rod down, use shorter springs, then that groove can't come up. Therefore, it can't equalise the pressure, and that's. The only other way to to do that is to is to ignore that, and I know some shops that do that, and I don't know what sort of results they've had. They say that the, the forks don't pump up, but I've never, never tried it. The only other way to do it is to machine a, another little slot further up the rod, so that when you use an internal spacer, it brings the it has the same when it's topped out, it does the same thing. It uses the new new little groove. The trouble with that is if you put your forks back to standard, then you've got two grooves, and I don't think that's probably going to work very very well because it will be trying to equalize while it's under pressure in the second groove and therefore you'll be up for another cartridge rod to put your forks back to standard um, probably about four or five hundred dollars worth of parts I'd say so moving them up in the triple clamps to me is the only way I know of to shorten the forks without getting too involved or, or ignoring that groove and I think the groove is there for a reason. So then we just put the fork back together the way we took it apart. Now I'm not going to show filling with oil and bleeding it because there's a couple of WP videos that are really good that show a standard procedure and an advanced procedure and I'm going to put them up on this site underneath this video so they also show you taking the fork apart and putting it back together for, to this point. They don't show you taking out the cartridge rod because, of, well, I think they do, but they don't show you taking the bullet apart because they don't need to. They just take it apart, clean it, put it back together. So I suggest watching those to get a good idea of how to bleed them. And then pretty much that's it. That's the installation. Not as complicated as I first thought. In fact, quite a simple, um, quite a simple fork to take apart, but quite complex in its, the way it works. Okay, thanks for watching.